I'm here in the studio with Lee Scott from Starag. Um, in this feature, we're going to be talking about uh, engine casings within the aerospace sector. We've done quite a few episodes on machining different types of materials within the aerospace industry and also some of the, the parts now that we're talking about that are on the aircraft. Um, engine casings, Lee, we all see them. We sat, you know, we sat in our seats on the, on the aircraft. You can see the engine. Uh, under the wing there. What are the challenges in making these and machining these? How big can they go? How small do they go? And, and, and where does Starag fit in amongst the manufacturing? I, th I, think, the, I think the challenge in, in recent years has been to combine all of the machining features into, into a single setup platform. So historically, you might have had turning machines, milling machines, grinding machines. Now, we, we try and machine everything on a, on a single footprint. Um, what would be the different processes then within machining one of these engine casings? I mean, obviously this is where the blades are inside, it's where the engine rotates. Got to be precisely machined or ground, I assume, has it? Inside, as we can well, it, it depends, and, and, and you're right, it's, it's a containment system. So a casing could range from, say, say the size of a bucket up to something over three metres, you know, and, and, they, and they're getting even bigger in the future. Materials, um, you do see casings made from uh, carbon fiber composites these days and, and aluminium, but typically, I, th I think the bulk of the casings will get involved in a hard metal, say titanium type materials. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of heat being generated in there, isn't there? For sure. For so, sure. I mean, what would you have to, the machining, call it in the inside of it, what could that comprise of? Is there, you know, do the, are the blades made up in different ways in the engine, so there's different compartments almost as you go through it? Well, there is. If you, if you look at a typical engine, you've got different stages. So at the front of the engine, the cold end, you've got larger blades, and then the engine kind of tapers down, if you like, towards the back end where you've got the, the nickel alloy hot end blades. And you've got different containment systems, different casing systems around the, around the, around the engine. So um, if, we, if we take the middle section, again, they're more titanium-based materials. Um, around the outside of the casing, there's a lot of raised bosses, so you can't just um, turn everything. You, you've actually got a mill between each of the bosses. They've, they've got a lot of complex shaped holes, so multi-diameter holes. Um, around the inside, where each of the different stages of blade fit, there are machined features. So it's fairly complicated. You need tools to get sort of down, up, round, underneath. You know, they're not e they're not easy uh, easy components. And you've got to be pretty accountable when you're making parts of such importance, haven't you? And um, how do your machines achieve? the precision results and the one hit machining, which I suppose is critical when it comes to reliable uh, part first time, isn't it? Well, there's, there's two advantages to one hit machining. Firstly, you've got reduced number of setups. You've got reduced number of errors that you could be putting into the process. So if you can do all of your turning and your machined, milled and, 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 um, and uh, drilled features together, you've, you've got less error. You've also got less time. Um, you mentioned grinding, um, n n not all cases are ground, but occasionally there, there will be uh, features that need to be ground, especially on the MRO, the, the, the repair side as well. So again, you need to combine those technologies within a single platform. And what machines that you supply from Starag Lee would be ideal for the kind of component that we're, all the parts that we're talking about here, these um, casings? As usual, several. So for, for the smaller casings, we would put those on a Hecate platform. Uh, the the, the medium-sized casings would, would go on a Starag Milton type platform. As we get slightly larger, we're going onto the Bertier platform, especially when we're incorporating high, very high pressure and, and, and grinding, uh, mostly on nickel type materials. And then for the very large casings, we'll, we'll either use a Doris or, or a Droop type um, configuration uh, gantry or portal type machine with, with, with a turning table. So you need different machines for different sizes of product. And the final casing, weight must come into this as well, mustn't it, in terms of the, the final product. You want to r remove as much material, reduce as much weight as possible, because this is going to be in the skies. For sure, but the, the weight's determined by the designers. We, 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 we're, we're faced with raw material in and we're faced with having to deliver a finished casing at the other end. Okay, thank you very much. So if you're interested in the machining of aerospace parts, for example, casings that we've spoken about uh, in this episode, then we've done several episodes on the machining of aerospace materials as well as other parts that are on the aircraft and you'll find those across our channel. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you.